Here we go. In the NFL, dynasties end because of injuries and free agency. In the NBA, dynasties end because of egos. So a couple nights ago, Draymond Green had the ball. Kevin Durant's open. End of a game against the Clippers. You remember that. And it's the last couple seconds, and Kevin Durant wants the ball, and Draymond Green, he can't get him the ball, and he falls down. Oh, boy, it's just not very good. The star wanted it. Star didn't get it. The best player wanted it. Best player didn't get it. And then and they went to the huddle, and they argued, and it was ugly, and there was a bunch of stuff said, and some of it was personal. And Draymond apparently called out Kevin Durant, his salary and his contract. And the Warriors then suspended Draymond yesterday. And they don't always suspend Draymond. They almost never suspend Draymond. They've been dr dealing with Draymond for years. But they took Kevin Durant's side. They took Kevin Durant's side because they knew Draymond and Kevin Durant have an issue. And Kevin Durant can leave at the end of the year. Sounds like it was no big deal. Sounds like everybody's over it. Ah, uh, the fabric's starting to tear near Silicon Valley, is it not? It all started with a couple of little arguments with Kobe and Shaq, Michael Jordan and Jerry Reinsdorf, the big three in Boston. Just a couple of little small, small arguments. No big deal. I'll get back to it. I had an NBA player text me last night. He said, KD holds grudges. Another NBA player told Marcus Thompson, a fine reporter, KD is gone. Bank on it. This magnifies the truth about the relationship with Kevin Durant and the Warriors. It's always been Steph's team. That's why Kevin Durant is always trying to prove to you and prove to me and prove to Draymond and prove to Twitter and prove to the media. It's my team. I got power here. There's an old saying, the greatest sign of power is you never have to use it. Tony Soprano walked in a room. It was understood. Roger Goodell, Jerry Jones, Stan Kroenke, big people in sports. You know, they walk into rooms in Miami, in Dallas. You go to any city in the country. The guys with power don't have to flex. It's understood. Steph Curry never flexes here. We all know. He never tries to prove it's his team. It's understood. He doesn't go on Twitter, doesn't hold big press conferences. He recruited Kevin Durant. He was so secure with himself. This is Steph's team. And Golden State and Kevin Durant has always been an imperfect fit. They won a title without him. They beat him in the playoffs. They set a regular season 73-win record without him. And they had a unanimous MVP. And it wasn't KD. It would be like being the best actor in the world if you were Kevin Durant. And you join a franchise that's already number one at the box office and was started by somebody else, and he's still in the movie too. Oh, you're great in the movie. The franchise is better with you. Don't get me wrong. You have made the franchise better. But, dog, they were number one in the box office without you. And the guy who created it, <laughs> a lot of people like him more anyway. When you leave the room, they like him more than you, and they think you're kind of flaky and insecure, and they think he's secure and cool. And that's what we got here. This Draymond Kevin Durant dust up. You don't see this with Steph. You ever notice that? Clay and Steph, no dust up. Kerr, Bob Meyer, Draymond. Nobody messes with Steph. He changed the league. This is his team. And I feel bad for Kevin Durant because there's always been an agitation with this team. Like when he came to the Warriors, sell out. Couldn't win without him. So even if he goes to the finals and he's done this twice and he wins and he's the MVP, <laughs> so what? He has to prove to the players around the league, the stars around the league, his owners around. He's constantly trying to. So there's this agitation that just hangs over Kevin Durant. Now look around the NBA. The great teams become the personality of their superstar. Magic. Those Lakers, they were called Showtime. Magic, fun, smiles, flashy. They became Magic Johnson. Tim Duncan's dynasty in San Antonio became him. Unselfish. Pass more, take less. The Jazz and Carl Malone and John Stockton. It was workmanlike. Just like their two stars. Michael Jordan's Bulls, relentless. Just like Mike. And LeBron's teams... All of them, 
They're all smart, just like him. This Golden State Warrior franchise embodies all of Steph Curry's traits. They're free-flowing. They're fun. They're clever. They're finesse. They're low-tension, high-performance. And they're a little streaky. If they embodied Kevin Durant's primary personality, they would be insecure, agitated, and kind of flaky. Draymond and Kevin Durant, this is how dynasties die in the NBA. In pro football, you lose some good assistance. Guys get hurt like Philadelphia. You enter the season. The Eagles aren't the same team. They were on crutches. But in the NBA, what starts to tear the fabric, basketball's always been about the individual, the entitled superstar. Starts to, you know, ego, little fight, little brawl, little this, locker room, little tension. The fabric's tearing. It's coming to an end. May take a while. But this was something bigger, in fact, than most in the media understood. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.